So thanks, everyone, for being here for one of the final talks of today. I'm going to talk about improved online contention resolution for matchings and applications to the gig economy. This is joint work with Mohamed Rogani, Amin Sabari, and David Weitz. So for a motivating example, consider the problem faced by a food delivery platform. So often such platforms will batch local orders over a small interval of time and then deliver these orders by offering drivers take it or leave it prices. And so a natural question is, constrained to this simple mechanism, what is a good way to set these prices? So we model this by something we call the sequential pricing problem. So in this model, there's a set of individuals i and a set of jobs j. Each job j has some value vj for being completed. The way that we can match individuals to jobs is by offering a price pi ij for individual i to complete job j. So for example, we could offer individual one a price of pi one two dollars to complete the second job. So we assume that if we offered some price w with a known probability p i j w, i is going to accept and i and j are then permanently matched. Uh, if i rejects, then i and j will never be matched. So um, in this way, we're going to build some matching mu and the revenue of this uh, matching is kind of naturally defined as the total values of all of the jobs that we've matched minus the sum of all of the prices along the edges that we've matched. Um, so we could also work on, we could also think about optimizing for social welfare, a convex combination of revenue and social welfare, and our results extend there too. But for simplicity for this talk, I'll just think about revenue. So uh, when evaluating an algorithm for this problem, it's important to define the right benchmark. So I just wanted to quickly mention that although for many you know, online matching problems, is there an issue? No, it's good. It's good. For many online matching problems, um, the optimum offline is kind of a well-studied uh, benchmark. In this case, it's actually impossible to achieve any sort of approximation. So we take the optimum online algorithm as our benchmark. It's well-defined and actually NP-hard to compute exactly, even if there's only a single job. Uh, it's a result of Xiao et al. And so based on this, it's natural to focus on designing uh, poly-time approximations to the optimal online policy. Um, so that's what we do. And our first, I'm going to state our results in two parts. Um, so our first result is just that there exists a poly-time algorithm for this problem that gives a 0.45 approximation to the optimum online. OK. So to state the second part of our uh, results, I'm going to give a little bit of background quickly about the uh, correlation gap of matching and online contention resolution schemes. Um, so the correlation gap of matching, the setup is that we're given some weighted graph and some fractional matching x. The fractional value of x is kind of naturally defined just as the weight of this fractional matching. Um, and the, the correlation gap study is a very naive way, maybe, to round this, uh, this fractional matching. So in, in particular, um, we, we consider rounding every single edge independently. So we have this fractional matching x. It has some fractional value. We consider what would happen if we rounded each edge independently. So we let r of x um, consist of the set of edges where we realize each edge e independently with probability x e. Of course, in general, that's not going to be a matching. So uh, we let m of x denote the max weight matching among those realized edges and define the independently rounded value of x to just be the expected weight of that uh, max weight matching. So you know, we've lost something. Oh, let me maybe click. Okay, So we've lost something, and the correlation gap just like quantifies this loss. It's the worst case ratio between the expected value of the matching after the independent rounding. We lost something else. Oh, no. <laughs> OK, so it's the worst case ratio for any instance of the independently rounded value and the fractional value. And um, so some bounds are known for this. So, uh, an upper bound was given actually in 1981 by Karp and Sipser, showing that the correlation gap of matching is at most 0.54. Um, and recently, there were some lower bounds of Guru Ganesh and Lee and Brugman and Zenklusen showing um, 0.4323 and 0.4326. Okay, so that, that's the background about correlation gap. Now, I want to briefly define um, online contention resolution schemes which were introduced by Feldman, Svensson, and Zenklusen in 2016, and have found applications in all sorts of um, online algorithmic problems. Um, so for matching, we're considering 
The setup is that we're given some graph and again some fractional matching. Now the edges arrive in some order, and they're each active independently with probability xe, similar to in the correlation gap setting. But here they only reveal their active status upon arrival, and we have to decide you know, irrevo irrevocably upon arrival whether we would like to match the edge, as opposed to in correlation gap where they're all realized you know, at once in some sense. Um, so um, the kind of goal is to design what's called a C-balanced OCRS, where the probability we match an edge E is at least C times XE for every edge E. Um, and this is, you know, a, as I mentioned, is a stricter requirement than uh, we have for correlation gap. And kind of just by linearity of expectation, any C-balanced OCRS is going to show that the correlation gap is at least C. But it's a you know, significantly stricter uh, framework. Um, and here I'll just mention, you know, there are many results, but I'll just mention that Ezra et al. showed that um, under an adversarial arrival order of these edges, there exists a 0 0.337 balanced OCRS. And Brubach et al. showed that under a random arrival order, there's a 0 0.432 balanced OCRS for matching. OK, so now I can state um, the, the second part of our result. So we actually reduced the design of an approximation algorithm for the sequential pricing problem to the design of a random order OCRS for matching, which I'm going to denote by uh, ROOCRS for this talk. Um, and then we gave uh, improved random order OCRSs for matching. So in particular, we showed that you can achieve a 0 0.456 balanced OCRS for bipartite graphs and a 0 0.45 balanced OCRS for general graphs. And actually, as a corollary, at least for general graphs, it's an improvement on the correlation gap of uh, matching, which is uh, despite you know, applying to a more restrictive uh, setting. So but, but yes, question. So if you're, you're targeting to beat the correlation gap, couldn't you just like focus on the offline contention resolution? Yeah, so I mean, so actually we weren't targeting that. It's maybe just a little surprising that actually oh, okay. the online setting now, yeah. Right. Um, OK, so the way we reduced to um, the design of OCRS for this problem is we first wrote an LP relaxation. So this LP, the decision variables are these YAWs. And we just think of these as being uh, the probability that we query along edge E with uh, price w. So there's just kind of the natural constraints that we query along each edge with at most one price, and that the number of you know, edges, the realized edges incident to any vertex is at most one. Um, and it, so it's straightforward to see that you know, this, this LP upper bounds the expected value of the optimum online algorithm. And uh, to reduce to uh, OCRS, uh, what we do is we for every edge E before running the algorithm, we, we set a price pi E at random based on our LP-like solution. So in particular, we guarantee that the probability pi E equals W is Y E W. Um, then we observe that if we're going to query along edge E with price pi E, the probability E is successful is exactly you know, the sum over all W, Y E W, you know, the probability we chose that price pi E times P E W, the probability like that that agent is going to accept. So we, we define this quantity to be xe. We note that by our LP, that's in the matching polytope. So now we observe that if we you know, query along these edges in a random order, using those you know, randomly selected prices, pi e, um, we, can, we can think of it as the same as, as when we're you know, designing an algorithm for a random order OCRS, because each edge is realized um, with a probability xe independently and we only see that upon arrival. So there, there are a few, like, you know, a few technical details, but this is, the main, um, this is the main idea. And now, you know, for the rest of the time, I'll give you some ideas about how we uh, designed the new random order OCRS, which is the main technical contribution of this uh, work. So um, before I do that, I'll, I'll briefly mention an algorithmic template for random order OCRSs for matching that has been used previously in the literature. So it's. Um, the way that this works is, so first, for every edge E, we sample a random arrival time TE from the uniform distribution on 0, 1. And then we sort these edges in increasing order of TE. So we get a uniformly random uh, permutation. And then you know, when an edge E arrives, so we get to observe whether it's active or not. And we look at you know, if it's active and its endpoints are free. So, so notice that this is the only you know, case where we have a decision to make. So if the endpoints are occupied, we cannot match E, like if either endpoint is occupied. Or if E is inactive, we, we can't match E. So this is the only case where we have to make a decision. So kind of the, the natural thing is maybe to match E with some probability. 
So we just let s of e just denote some, you know, some probability for edge e. The letter s is to, because we, we can call this a downsampling function for this edge. And just to get a little bit of intuition, you know, maybe the most basic thing you could do is take s of e to equal 1 for every edge. So it's kind of like a greedy algorithm that just accepts active edges. So this gets a balance ratio of 1 third. And uh, prior work has found um, uh, different, different downsampling functions that achieve uh, significantly improved balance ratios. So, so one, and actually multiple, this, this was the prior best uh, bound, and um, multiple works achieved it. And like this one such function that does it is e to the minus te times xe, which achieves this 0 0.432. Um, so unfortunately, all of these previous downsampling functions, the analysis was tight. So we, we really need a new algorithm if we want to improve on them. And they're shown to be tight by this simple you know, path on three edges, where the, the middle edge b has very you know, small x value and gets matched with uh, probability approximately 0 0.432 times xb, or you know, probability approaching that. Um, but the good news in this example is that actually the other two edges are matched with probability significantly higher than needed. In particular, the, you know, the factor is approximately 0 0.632, 1 minus 1 over e. Um, so kind of going beyond just this simple example for three paths, we observe that in, you know, in general graphs, if first we, we define dE for an edge e to be the sum of all of the x values on edges f incident to e. And we notice that if this is small, then e is actually going to be matched with a higher probability than required, with a higher probability than 0 0.432 times xe. So to get a little intuition here, so notice this dE quantity is always going to be at most 2 minus xe just because we're dealing with a fractional matching. Um, and like notice that in this example, edges a and c you know, satisfy this. Like for edge a, d sub a is only uh, 1 over n, which is significantly smaller than needed. So it's getting some like, you know, it's doing better just already by virtue of that. So th this suggests like, you know, our main idea, which is that maybe we can downsample such edges e more aggressively. Since you know, in this example, kind of what you want to do is you want to downsample edges a and c you know, more so that you can boost the chance that you can match edge b. Um, so that's like the main idea of our work. Um, so our new downsampling function basically starts with the same e to the minus t e x e, which achieves this 0 0.43, and kind of multiplies it by a factor 1 minus alpha times 2 minus x e minus d e. So alpha is some parameter we optimize over at the end of our analysis. Um, but the, the main conclusion from this downsampling function is just to notice that if d e is small, particular, you know, significantly less than 2 minus x e, we're downsampling more aggressively. So I'll just, you know, in one slide try to give some overview of the techniques we use to, like, analyze this. Uh, so first, you know, the easier case to think about, so fix some edge e. We're going to analyze what we get for just this edge e. If most of its neighboring edges have a small value of df. So that's, like, maybe the easier case where we can see that our new downsampling is going to help us a lot, because all of those f's are getting downsampled more than in this baseline um, random order OCRS. So that's going to you know, intuitively make it easier to match uh, edge e. And so the kind of trickier part of the and more technical part of the analysis is that you know, it could be that most edges f incident to e actually have a large df. And here it's maybe a little bit, you know, it's a little unclear why this like, new downsampling function is going to actually help us uh, improve on uh, prior work. But you know, our main technical observation is that such edges f, just by, because they have a high value of df, they have you know, many uh, high weight of edges incident to them. So they have a good chance of having some incident matched edge uh, g. So maybe I should put the figure. Those, it could be the case that those edges f are active, but are not going to prevent edge e from being matched. So in this figure, you know, what we're trying to think of is that there's some case where f is active upon arrival, but when it arrived, edge g was already matched. So in this case, you know, even though f is going to like, be active and be incident to e, we can still actually match the edge e. Um, and this, you know, so we showed that because the df is large, there's a decent chance that this happens, and uh, that, in the end of the day, makes it easier to match the edge e. So that's the most technical part of the analysis. And then the parameter alpha kind of is chosen to balance between these two cases. 
Um, so I'll briefly mention one extension. If every individual has some patience parameter, li specifying that we can query at most li edges incident to it, we also give you know, a polynomial time approximation algorithm. It's maybe relevant because in some um, you know, gig economy settings, we might not want to overload workers with uh, offers. And um, we show that you know, the techniques used for this also give improvements for the stochastic matching with patients problem. OK, so let me briefly uh, conclude. So our main results are an improved 0.45 balanced random order OCRS for matching. And using this, a 0.45 approximate uh, polynomial time algorithm for the sequential pricing problem. So I think, I think there's a lot of interesting uh, directions for future work. Uh, one of them is that you know, we still have pretty large gaps in the correlation gap uh, for matching and in random order OCRS. In particular, you know, our OCRS is not tight. And it seems like there are a lot of settings where we're kind of missing some ideas for how to get the, the best possible balance ratio for OCRS. And I, I think it's a really interesting question for future work. Um, another question is that, you know, when we designed this algorithm, our choice to look at the edges in a uniformly random order was in some sense um, self-imposed. Like, that was a useful thing for our analysis, but in principle, we could have chosen any order that we like that could be, you know, significantly better than just the uniformly random one. Um, so I think, you know, studying the original problem or even just the OCRS setting where we get full control over the, you know, the order of the edges. I don't know if anyone studied that before, and I think it's potentially an interesting uh, question for future work. Okay, so that's it. Thanks so much. Yes, question. So there is equivalence between online conventional resolution and property inequality in this respect, for example, relaxation. Yep, they, yep. So uh, does the same uh, result exist for profit secretary and uh, random order? Under yeah, so I think with exactly the same trick, if you write the ex ante relaxation, I believe this shows that the you know, 0 0.45 for profit secretary for matching. But how about the other, so the other way? So if I give you like a profit secretary result, because for uh, oh, the other way. Quality, you can actually, with respect to example, you can translate it into online conventional resolution. So it's paper of Lee and Singla, but. Yeah, I, I, have, I have seen it. I actually did not think about the other way yeah. in the random order uh, case. So I'm not, I'm not sure, but because I can. Then my follow up question is has anyone studied the profit secretary for match? And I don't know any. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not aware of any paper that explicitly yeah. studied profit secretary for matchings. Um, but yeah, thanks for the questions. Questions? Is your OCRS monotone? It is not necessarily uh, monotone. And the other question is, like, when you mentioned following the chosen order, uh, instead, like, do you think such property holds for the best known, OC, best known CRS in offline settings? Like, if there is edge? Because I think, as far as I know, like, even in the offline setting, you downweight edges by some factor. So I don't know if I fully understand so the question. I, I, I was, I'm just asking that whether you like this would extend to the offline setting as well. There's a better better improvement. Oh, whether it would also give uh, improvements. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm not. I understand if the question is, you know, so this, definitely the same approximation applies to the offline, yes, the offline resolution. resolution. So if you look at the more relaxed offline contention resolution, can you beat the 0 0.45? So I know for bipartite graphs, you know, better things are known for even like for offline contention resolution, yeah. which is kind of the same as the correlation gap. Uh, for general g graphs, like as far as I know, this is the best for you know uh, for you know even offline contention resolution. So it's kind of strange that it's online. So yes, it does really feel like there should be some way to beat it if. Uh, you're in the offline setting, but like probably it requires some uh, different types of techniques. I, guess I would the free think. order setting is somewhere sitting in the middle, so it's not the right. Order. Right, definitely, it should be in intuitively. Yeah. Uh, so. I oh, question. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think some of the earlier works on the downsampling, you don't need to take the time of arrival of the edge into account. Like, can you speak a bit about how, how that sort of helps your analysis, the fact that you can downsample uh, that uh, by a rate that sort of changes over time? Yeah, so that's a great question. So yeah, I'm, I'm aware, I find it 
you know, very cool that there are works that don't require those like TEs to be a part of the downsampling function. I guess somehow the very cleanest, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I guess the best answer is I'm not exactly sure why it helps, but I do know, you know, the cleanest analysis that I know, the cleanest analyses that I know all have this uh, time involved. And somehow the, the ones I know that don't have the time involved uh, require more structural observations about, like, oh, like these are the exact XEs that are going to potentially minimize this function. Um, all of the, the cleaner, I'm not sure exactly why, but the cleaner ones I've seen use these times. So that's, that's why we like started from that. Probably there's one without the times that would also uh, give like a good, like a similar approximation ratio, I'm guessing. But yeah, that's a good question. Okay, uh, if there's no more questions.